Thank you, Father, for tonight. Lord, we know that you are here in our midst. As you yes, said, two or three, or whether two or three are gathered in your name, you're going to be, you are in our midst, yes. Lord. Yes. Father, we pray for the peace that pass, passes on uh, all understanding. Lord, let the entrance of your word give light. Let the entrance of your word give understanding. Let the entrance of your word give comfort to us, Lord. Mm -hmm. Knowing, Lord, that you love us very much mm -hmm. and that all is well. It is well with our souls. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. So tonight, the, the topic actually is, uh, if, if you've read the book, the chapter 12 is so romantic. It's so good. And pagkatapos siguro basahin, kung hindi nyo pa nabasa, basahin nyo. Or nabasa nyo, nabasahin nyo ulit. So the, the, the title actually is um, A Revolution of Relationship. Because any other religion is based on your works, based on uh, based on what you're supposed to do for God. Right? Uh, may set of rules, may set of ganyan. But, but Christianity is defined as a revolution of relationship because you're not in a relationship with a stone. You're not uh, in a relationship with rules and regulation, but you are in a re relationship with grace, which is a person. Who is a person? Hindi siya which, who, who is a person. So chapter 12, a revolution of relationship because mm -hmm. grace is a person. It's not a doctrine. Christianity is not a doctrine. Jesus came... Jesus came, the re very reason why Jesus came is for you and I to have an abundant life and for you and I to be reconciled to Abba Daddy God so that we can call him our Abba Father. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Yung ginomay, ginomay is to become. So hindi tayo, hindi, hindi it's it's um it's a verb yes but it's it's already done because of the finished work of Jesus Christ so hindi siya hindi di ba hindi siya human doings it's human beings so we have become because of the finished work of Jesus Christ so ginomai means to become signifies a change of condition state or place we have we 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 were brought from a, from darkness to light we were brought from the kingdom of this world to the kingdom of heaven Right? So it's a state. Now your state, your state is you, heaven begins actually, heaven began when you, uh, when you were born again, when you were renewed. Right? He, uh, the, the God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and, and, and the Son actually took residence in you. So you are, you are with the Lord constantly, whether you like it or not. Whether we like it or not, we are with the Lord. So, hindi yung pag namatay ka and then you get to heaven and then you get to be with the Lord. No, we are with the Lord. The Holy Spirit actually is in you and you are in Him. And tonight, that's actually what we're going to study. So, okay, just a review. The law, right, and grace. Grace is what God has provided in Mount of Calvary, in Golgotha, which is Mount Zion. And, and the law was is in Mount Sinai. So, God has moved mountains from Mount Sinai, which is which uh, which um, which is the mountain where the law was given, to Mount Zion. Mount Zion is where grace, um, uh, di ba dun, dun yung ano, um, in the in in the last days, Jesus will touch will touch his feet will touch Mount Zion, right? So for the law was given through Moses, and 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 Zion typifies grace. So for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So briefly, and the natin. So yung law it was given to a servant through Moses, right? Um, very impersonal, but grace came, grace and truth came through the Son. He literally, literally came um, uh, so that you and I will be reconciled to God the Father. So the law talks about what man ought to be, what you need to do, set of rules and regulations that you need to obey, but grace reveals who God is, and grace is a teacher. Grace will teach you godly living. So it's it, in the first miracle, Moses he turned water into blood. In the first miracle of grace, Jesus turned water into wine, resulting into life and celebration. That's why in the house of the Lord, there's no weeping, there's no there's no sadness. It's always life and celebra uh, celeb uh, celebration. Um. Uh, 
The letter kills, which is the law, but the Spirit gives life. Under the law, God demands righteousness from sinfully bankrupt man, but under grace, God provides righteousness as a gift. So whenever, whenever, um, whenever you ask somebody, actually, uh, to define righteousness, you will gauge the person's maturity by the answer. If they say righteousness is something that you need to do, it's born out of your obedience, uh, that person is still immature. Because grace, the answer, actually, for for you to gauge maturity is when the person is, say, is going to give you the answer, it's a gift. It's always a gift. Righteousness is a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. Okay. Under the law, God said, I will be no means clear the guilty, but I will visit their sins to the third and fourth generation. Ito yung katuruan dati na uh, generational curse. But no more. Under God says, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more. God made himself forget. He made himself forget. So the only thing that you and I need need to need to realize is to really receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness every day, constantly. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. So, um, so ito pa hindi ko na to dadaanan na, but it's it's a good reference for you guys. Okay, you know because sinabi nga natin sinabi natin that uh, Christianity is a revolution of relationship. The first mention of the word love in the Bible is not between the love between man and a woman. It's not it's not between love between um but it's it's the love actually of Abba Daddy God to his son. Then he said, "Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah." Wait a minute. Isn't it that Abraham had two sons at this point in time? He had Ishmael and he had Isaac. So bakit sinabi ni Lord dito na, Take now your only son, your only son whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on the mountains of which I shall tell you. We used to interpret this before, di ba, na, Oh, offer your Isaac to the altar. Over your ganyan to the altar. But you know what? This particular, the first mention of the word love is in, is in this particular verse. And it's not pertaining to man. It's not pertaining to you and I or whatever we need to surrender to the Lord. It's actually talking about, um, God is actually talking about His one and only Son. Tingnan natin ha. And He said, tingnan natin yung interlinear. Take now, look, Aleph Tab your only son. He was talking to Abraham about his son Jesus that he that, who will be offered as a burnt offering for you and I on Mount Calvary. And he said, take now your only son, your one and only son whom you love. You know, the measure, the, 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 the degree that you give attention to Jesus or the way, the way you treat Jesus is the way you're going to be treated by the Father. If you give special attention, if you give um, utmost importance to His Son, you have the attention of the Father. Because Jesus is the one and only Son. That's why when we come to Him, we remind Him of the beauty and the perfection of His Son. We remind Him of the loveliness and the person of Jesus Christ. We remind Him about the finished work. That's why when we receive communion, it's the best way because we remind Abba Daddy God about the loveliness of our Lord Jesus Christ, about the finished work of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is His one and only Son. And you and I find our, 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 ident our identity is found in the person of Jesus Christ. So He said, again, take now, Aleph Tab, your only Son, whom you love. So every day when we go to the Father, Lord, we bring the sacrifice of praise. Yung palang ibig sabihin nun. Right? It's not you. It's not your sacrifice. It's not you bringing your sacrifice to the altar. Because anyway, it's useless. Diba? Those are all done. It's going to be burned. Right? The only sacrifice that will matter, that mattered actually, is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As a burnt offering, our Ola. So, the nature of God's love for us is demonstrated in the love He has for His Son. 
Okay, ulit. The nature of God's love for us is demonstrated in the love He has for His Son. The degree of how much God the Father loves Jesus is how much you and I are loved by our Abba Daddy God. It's the same. How much He loves Jesus is how much He loves you and I. How much He loves Jesus is how much He loves you, my dear sister. And it, it's, as I say this, it, it's, you know, the Holy Spirit is, you know, warming. It's very warming, you know. It's, it warms the heart. So, after Genesis 22 is the longest chapter of Genesis, which is Genesis 24. So, after God the Father talks about His Son, and the Son, actually, he loves His, his, his Son, He now instructs the unnamed servant in, in chapter 24 to, look, to, to do what? To look for a bride. The name servant, when it's a name, it's usually, it's not, it's usually, it is actually the Holy Spirit. You know that the Holy Spirit doesn't call attention to himself. The Holy Spirit calls attention to Jesus. The Holy Spirit will always tell you and I to give glory and to magnify the name of Jesus. To give glory and magnify the finished work. So, Minsan, you know, we're so gung ho about, you know, um, uh, um, uh, talking about it. It's not, it's not bad, huh? Um, the Holy Spirit, you know, it's a. Uh, we have to recognize that the Holy Spirit is God, but the Holy Spirit's primary, primary, primary role is to give, to point to Jesus, to give, to 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 point us to Jesus, to remind us of our righteousness, to convict us of our righteousness. He convicts, nah, he doesn't convict us of our sin. He convicts the world of sin. As He convicts us of our righteousness. Naaral natin yan in Gospel of Ten Words. So, this is the longest chapter. The longest chapter is the love story. The love story of um, the bride and the bridegroom. Tingnan nyo, basahin nyo yung um, 24. It, it is in this chapter that we find the second mention of the word love appearing. Whereas chapter 22 contained that first mention, which was our father's love for his son, chapter 24, the second mention is the story of the son's love for his bride, you and I, his bride. So, you shall go to my country and to my family and take a wife for my son Isaac. Then the servant took ten of his master's camel and departed for all his master's good wear in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia to the city of Nahor. And made his camels kneel down outside the city by well by by a well of water at evening, the time when women go out to draw the water. There's so many things that um that can be discussed here, but I want to focus on this this angle. So it was when the camels had finished drinking that the man took a golden nose ring, golden nose ring, um, weighing half a shekel and two bracelets for her, wrist weighing ten shekels of gold, and said, Whose daughter are you? Whose daughter are you? Tell me, please. Is there a room in your father's house for us to lodge? So we know that the new concealed and the old revealed. Diba? So um, uh, uh, it's concealed, but in the uh, um, Jesus is already revealed in the New Testament, but in the in the old, he was concealed, right? So it, in this story, ganun yung gagawin natin. The new concealed, the old revealed. So the Old Testament is the new concealed. And the new is the old revealed. Everything in the New Testament is hidden somewhere in the old in the in, in, in the Old Testament, in types, stories, names, places, and even language itself. Right after the unnamed servants' camels were watered, the man took a golden nose ring weighing half a shekel and two bracelets for your wrist, wrist weighing ten shekels of gold. In the nose in biblical type typology depicts discernment. Discernment. While gold uh, the, while gold, alam na natin to, speaks of divine righteousness. The unnamed servant gave these gifts of gold to Rebecca, who is a typology of the church. Rebecca is a picture of the church. These gifts, yung, 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 um, yung bracelets, right? Um, those are uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit, like gifts of healing, di ba? Your hands. Gifts of, uh, gifts of, of healings. And then, um, ano ba? Um, uh, bracelets, pwede din, pwede din sa feet, di ba? Two bracelets for your wrist, pwede din sa, pwede din sa, um uh uh pwede din sa, sa ankle right so gifts of the holy spirit so okay you know that rebecca in hebrew means secured you and i 
bride of Christ are secured in our bridegroom. So before, di ba, wala pa namang aeroplano, there were no trains, there were no automobiles. It took a long time to travel from Mesopotamia to Canaan where Isaac uh, was situated together with his father Abraham. Some 500 miles over a very rugged terrain. So I could imagine, Rebecca, right? Tayo, imagine mo. How does, how does he look like? You, you ask the Holy Spirit, how is Jesus? Diba? So the Holy Spirit, when you read the Bible, he reveals, he reveals the Lord Jesus to us. Right? It's like, it's like, the, it's like the story of Rebecca asking the a name servant, how is Isaac? How does he look like? How, 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 how is he? Paano, paano ba siya? What is his favorite? Diba? So Rebecca, with so many wonderful stories about the wonderful Isaac to whom she was soon to be wed. So at long last, they reach their destination in Genesis 24, 64 English. And it's a beautiful picture of the bride meeting the bridegroom. Then Rebecca lifted her eyes. And when she saw Isaac, she dismounted from her camel. You know that in the word dismounted literally means she fell. She fell off her horse as in si ate nag fell. She couldn't get off the camel fast enough to run and jump into his arms. You know that the word yung 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 fell don actually is the same word that was used in in uh, in Thessalonians for the word rapture. You and I actually when when the, when 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 the Lord gets us right, uh, when the Lord raptures us, we will literally fell into His arms. Kanda no so again you and I are the bride secured in every way in every way by the bridegroom. Okay, let's go now to the Song of Songs. There's a beautiful portion of um, scripture, Song of Songs, Song of Solomon, right in the middle of your Old Testament. Where has your beloved gone, O fairest among women? Where has your beloved turned aside, that we may seek with you? Song of Songs is a beautiful description of our wonderful Jesus, his love for us and his loving relationship with us, the church, the bride. It is a picture of two so so in love, one with one another, that neither could ever have eyes for anyone else. The love they share is very deep and abiding. So, you know, immediately we now go into this topic. It's not we are not ordinary brides, right? But to be but uh but we before we we I discuss with you. What is the what is the description of our bridal relationship? Jesus talks to and about us in very intimate terms, used in this describe uh, used in describing marital relationships. Then, in chapter six of Song of Song, the beloved has gone away, just like the the Lord Jesus is already with uh, is is in heaven, um, God the Father. He's describing us. His bride has been left here. We're left right. And uh, the Holy Spirit is this is is the name servant actually telling us who Jesus is testifying right. So in 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 essence in verse in verse eight. So in verse eight you will see there's a verse. You will see this particular this particular words. Yes, group believers, believers are saved, saved. His church into three categories: queens, concubines, and virgins without number. What in the world? What does it mean? So, Song of Songs 6.8. Tingnan nyo ha. There are 60 queens and 80 concubines and virgins without number. In the verse above, notice that there are fewer queens, concubines. There are more concubines actually, but virgins without number, yun pinakamarami. The Holy Spirit is drawing pictures for us again. He has something important He wants us to know. Let's find out what it is. So the picture of a queen. So we're, the, the, lahat yun bride, ah. um, uh, lahat sila bride. But actually, but but sad to say, some had a have a revelation that they are queen. Some have revelation that they're eh, acting like concubines and virgins. So ito yung queen, queen bride. Sino yun? Si queen Elizabeth yun eh. Concubines and then virgins without number. So punta muna tayo dun sa concubines ah. So just to establish ah, these are all believers. Right, group, but group into three categories, as in uh, in songs, song six, uh, so, uh, songs six eight, concubines. Concubines, by definition, share intimacy, but do not share the throne. They have, in effect, lost their scepter. What does it mean? Simply this: 
throne and scepter are depictions of power and authority. Christians in this category don't yet fully know who they are in Christ. A king's scepter was, uh, was, is always made of gold. Gold in the Bible speaks of divine righteousness. Ito yung mga Kristiyano na hindi niya alam that they've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. So to lose your scepter means you have a consciousness of your sins versus your consciousness that you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. So those who have lost their scepter are more hesitant to approach God. Yung, mayroon, there's, a, there's a feeling of distance. They tend to beg God for answers to prayers without full assurance that He will answer. They usually believe they must ask forgiveness for their sins each time they fall and be made right again and again so that they may come into His presence. This false conception breeds a fear and hesitance, creating a perceived distance between themselves and God. Notice it is perceived. It's, it's only perception. But you know that your perception is actually your reality. Jesus, on the other hand, never leaves us nor forsakes us. We may sometimes feel far away from Him, but that's not the truth. Jesus doesn't make house calls. He never need, he, he doesn't need, He doesn't need to because He lives in, believes in you and I, in, in, in His temple, you. So, concubines, diba? Ano to, eh? Very, very, um, uh, talamak or very common in the Chinese culture from way before. So, concubines understood, it's understood to refer to a wife or sexual partner of secondary status, parang secondary, second, uh, sec, second class citizen. As a result of this false perception though, they come before the throne in prayer. They don't sit on it, never quite feeling worthy enough. So, sitting speaks of rest. They're not at ease or at rest in God's presence. If they approach Him with confidence, it is generally based on their estimate of their own performance. Sadly, they have little or no power as they walk through life. They have, they have a tendency to fall prey much more easily to sicknesses and troubles and struggle to try to live holy lives. Why? Because this beloved bride, actually, they think they're concubine, concubines. They're acting like concubines, don't fully understand how much they are loved by God. This understanding is key. I was biking with Edda, actually this morning or the other day, I was sharing with her. Now I understand, actually, this particular um, uh, uh, um, story in the Bible, di ba, uh, meron yung, meron yung, meron, there's this one guy na, who keeps on knocking and knocking, knock, and knocking, 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 knocking. And then, um, uh, uh, dun sa house ng friend niya, and then, sabi nga nun nung friend niya, binuksan yung friend, wala nang ano, bakit uh, uh, gabing-gabi na, ganyan-ganyan. Eh, hindi pwede, gabi na. Anyway, he kept on knocking, he keep, he keep, he keep on knocking, he keeps on shouting. So, and, and then, sabi ko, and I realized, no, you know, actually, because the reason why he's outside is because he's not family. He's a friend. But for a family, for the bride and for the children, they're inside the house sleeping soundly together with the father. And you don't need to shout, actually. You don't need to shout. You only whisper. And lovers whisper, right? They don't They don't shout, I love you! Di naman ganun, di ba? Di naman, I love you too! Di naman ganun, di ba? So when lovers say intimate things, right? Say, I love you, di ba? Still, small voice. Hallelujah. What about virgins without number? Yeah. Virgins without numbers are believers who are just happy to be saved and washed by the blood. They don't actually, uh, uh, they don't know Jesus very well and they neither share intimacy with the king nor his throne. Yet they are saved. So they, they really don't care to study. They don't, okay, saved na ako, okay na yun. It is often difficult to tell these people, this group of people apart from the world. At least when they when they die, they'll go to heaven or they're still here, and when the rapture hits, they'll be going uh, going up with us. But the thing is, they're useless um, in terms of um, uh, um, in the kingdom, and then they live defeated lives. Wala nga pinagkaiba. You will not see the glory of God in their lives. So ano yung, ano yung gustong ipakita ng Holy Spirit sa atin? My dear beloveds, we are queens. We are queen brides. Queen brides, you are queen. You're, you're not just a bride. You are a queen bride. Hallelujah. A queen is one who has a bridal relationship with the king because your groom, your bridegroom is the king, Jesus. You know the reason why 
uh, and papasadahan natin, you're not called the wife. You are called the bride. She shares his name, his love, his throne, as well as intimacy with him. Believers in this category have a burning. Diba? Remember the time of your honeymoon? Right? You have a burning and deep and abiding love for your husband. For Jesus. Why? How? They know how much they are loved by him. That's the key. Born out of such intimacy is a walk that is secure in the knowledge of his perfect provision. She can lean hard on his love and be at rest. That's why... The Holy Spirit actually, even even um for um for husbands and for husband right husbands love your wives as the Lord loves His church. How does the Lord loves His church? The Lord loves His church as a bride during the honeymoon, where it is so passionate and so intense. So the bride here, she's not worried as she walks through life. There's a deep and abiding trust for her protection. She's supply minded. As opposed to demand-minded. Grace is supply-conscious. Law is demand-conscious. The queen freely shares everything with her king in full assurance of his love for her. That's why the Lord wants us to be in a state of honeymoon forever. There's no fear of retribution nor condemnation. She has full confidence and power that is evident in her walk to those around her because she understands she's enthroned with Jesus. She doesn't pray for victory. No, it is finished. She prays from the seat of victory, the place of rest. You and I are queens. So tingnan natin, bakit 60? So inaral ko tong 60. Okay. 60, actually the the letter 60 is uh, represented by, uh, the, 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 the number 60 is represented by the letter Samek. Okay, also spelled, it's the 15th letter in the Hebrew alphabet. The numerical value is 60. Do you see the figure? It looks like a ring. It looks like a ring. Meaning to sustain, to rely on, to strengthen, to refresh. So meaning the Lord is saying really you are a bride forever, a queen bride. A circle indicating to surround. You are protected. You are surrounded by His grace. You are surrounded by favor. So we are in Christ. We are in Christ. Galatians 2.20, Ephesians 1.13. And He is in us. Hallelujah. You're a queen bride, my dear sisters. So, Jesus calls his bride the bride of Christ. Ever wonder why we are called his bride and not his wife? Isaiah 61.10, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall, shall be joyful in my God. For he's clothed me with the garments of salvation. Your garment, your bridal gown is the garment of Yeshua. Salvation here is actually in the Hebrew, Yeshua. You're clothed in Jesus. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. May robe, ka, may robe pa, di ba? As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, as a bride adorns herself with jewels. These are your gifts. Di ba? As I mentioned kanina, your gifts, your bracelets in your ankles. Gifts, power gifts. Hallelujah. So, the bride, you're not, you're the bride, you're not the wife. You're a queen bride. Hallelujah. So, as many of you are married, tayo naman, Probably no, after a few years, love can mellow. Your appearance has probably changed somewhat, not to put too fine a point on it. Speaking for myself, there, there may be even um, disagreements or two, maybe more than a few since that magical day. But the point is, love is never as fresh. Diba? Uh, five years, ten years, love is never as fresh, beautiful, and unspoiled as on your wedding day. You and I, actually, the Lord... The way the Lord treats us is like it's always honeymoon. Every day is honeymoon. My darling, he's, my darling speaks. He's saying to me, get up, my love, my beauty, my queen. Come away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your, your bridegroom, who is Jesus, not so our Lord Jesus, his love for us is forever the same. Just like the very first day, eternally fresh eternally beautiful, unspoiled, and vibrant on the day we were wed to him. He is our bridegroom and is altogether lovely. He's more captivated, head over heels in love with us than we will ever comprehend. And the church, and church is why we're not called the wife the wife of Christ. We're called the bride. So yung, wa, yung, yung bride, right, it's kala. Naalala na natin ito in one of the chapters. Kala. The root word is kala. You know the meaning of the root word? is complete. Perfect. You and I are complete. 
because who completes you it's Christ so ano yung ano yung uh, uh, ano yung pictograph ng word um uh, kalal kalal which is the root word for kala open hand gift or providing shepherd shepherd when a letter is um letter is repeated it means to emphasize it means it's complete complete in the shepherd so the pictograph for the root word kalal perfect you are perfect my dear sisters because of the finished work of Jesus Christ free or gift of the great shepherd or completed by Yeshua so the word for perfect comes from the perfect shepherd who gives and never stops giving so what happens then when grace the fifth letter in the hebrew alphabet is added to the root, to the root word perfect which is kalal it becomes the bride hallelujah so the pictograph of the word bride kala open hand shepherd gimel and hey revealed you know that we are his trophy bride you hear see we are his trophy queen bride you know why what's the meaning of the bride it reads the shepherd the grace of the shepherd revealed in your life is going to be revealed the grace of the shepherd hallelujah the grace of the shepherd revealed in your life in my life the queen bride of jesus christ hallelujah and this ito ha um uh bear me with this one because it's very busy mas maganda siguro kung i-animate ko no hindi ko pala na-animate ko anyway para mas ano mas mas maintindihan natin okay so okay you know Diba? In the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph and then Tav. Right? May 22 letters. 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to Tav. 22 letters. Okay, so nandyan yung reference. So, in all of the universe, there's not enough space to contain the greatness of God, but all of Yahweh is contained in one man, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. And now, all of His great love is contained in man, His bride. You know why? Tingnan mo ha? The Hebrew letter Aleph Bet, yung system Aleph uh, Bet contains 22 letters. Counting from the first letter, Aleph, 1, 2, 3. Pag nag-count ka ng 11, ano yung mahihit mo? Mahihit mo is Kaf, which is open hand. Yung first letter in the word bride, right? Pag nag-count ka naman from, from Tav, mahihit mo yung lamed. Ah, siningit yung, pag siningit yung hey, magiging kala. So counting counting 11 positions yun na yun, ano? So what happened? These two letters are exactly in the middle of Aleph Bet. In the middle. In the middle of the Hebrew alphabet is actually Kala, the bride. So that's why I said in all of the universe, there's not enough space to contain the greatness of God. But all of Yahweh is contained in one man, Yeshua, when he came, he came as a man, right? And now all of his great love, all of His great love is contained in you and I, His bride. Hallelujah. Ang ganda, no? So hear the Father's heart when He says about you, bridegroom and the bride. Lift up your eyes and look around and see. All this gather together and come to you as live. As I live, you shall surely clothe yourself with them all as an ornament and bind them on you as a bride does. And John the Baptist testifying about the bridegroom making the way. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. Jesus Christ is your bridegroom. Jesus Christ, our bridegroom, defines you and I, the bride. Jesus, our bridegroom, defines the very being of you and I, the queen bride. Hallelujah. And John the apostle, when shown the bride, then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven plagues, came to me and talked with me saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from, from God. Having the glory of God, her light was like a most precious stone. Kita mo, huh? the way we are described, right? Like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as a crystal. And the spirit of God residing within us saying, and the spirit... And the bride say, come. So now knowing your identity, you can now tell to all the people, all your relatives, all your friends, come. And let him who, who hears, come. And let him who thirsts, come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. 
when we know our identity of our identity in Christ, sharing the gospel, serving the Lord will be an overflow. It's not going to be a problem. Okay. So the bride has been made has been made by garments of salvation. She's prepared for the bridegroom. Salvation here, as I've said, is the Hebrew word Yesha or Yeshua. All this was perfectly done by Christ on the cross. The bridegroom, the, the, Hebrew, the Hebrew word is katan. Fence, covenant, tav, um, uh, nun, uh, bab, life. Look at the fit picture. It says the cross secures life. Remember the definition of Rebecca? Secured. You and I, the Queen Bride, are secured. Secured. We have a secured life in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you know why? Because we are in, in 1 Corinthians 1.30. Balikan niyo to, ha? It's chapter 5 in Gospel in 10 Words. Nasa bottled memories. Pwede niyong, pwede niyong i-review. Union. This is actually one of the most beautiful chapters when we studied um, Gospel in 10 Words. But God has brought you in union with Jesus Christ, with Christ Jesus, with the resurrected Christ. In union with Christ, you're loved, forgiven, saved, accepted, holy, righteous, dead to sin, new and royal. Royal, why? Because you're the queen bride. So which now brings us to the, um, dinaskas ko din to doon sa chapter 5 uh, in um, Gospel in 10 Words Union, the story of Hosea. Alala ko to palagi itong pinipreach nun sa Jesus is Alive community. Remember si Hosea, um, he had a harlot wife. So alam na natin yung background, no? hindi ko na ulitin. ulitin. And the Lord said to him, so nag-asawa sila and then uh, after 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 a while, nagkaanak sila, nagka sila and then umalis na naman to si si ano si Gomer. She went back to be a uh, temple prostitute. Right? And then But the Lord said in chapter 3, then the Lord said to me, go again. Loved a woman who is loved by her husband. Actually, the Lord is, um, the Lord is, uh, this is our story. Yet an adulteress, even as the Lord loves the son of Israel, though they turn to other gods. Okay, ano na natin na, fast forward. So, to make the long story short, the Lord instructed Hosea to, to look and take back Gomer. Si Gomer yan, di ba? You know, there's meaning in the words, right? Hosea in Hebrew means salvation. Oshea, it means salvation. You know, Gomer, actually, in Hebrew means complete. You know why it's completed? You know, before Gomer is the signature of Jesus, Aleph Tab, Gomer actually didn't realize that she's complete. Tinamoto. So he went and took Aleph Tab, Gomer. She didn't know that she's complete. She's complete. <coughs> she's complete in who? Complete in Jesus. So, do you think Christians fully understand their, their union with the Lord? That's why we, we, we are studying, right? Like Gomer, sometimes you don't believe how completely forgiven we are. Like Gomer, Gomer complete, we don't realize or did not take time to understand that we find our completeness in Christ, our bridegroom. So in 2 Peter 1, 5-9, whenever, whenever we stray, whenever we, we are fearful, whenever we do something which is not glorifying the Lord, you know the, the 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 reason given by by the Lord by 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 the scriptures is that he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness because he has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Whenever we forget that we are forgiven of all our sins, we do all these kinds of nastiness. And then in Colossians, we don't realize that we are complete. You are complete in Him who is the head of all principality and power. Colossians 2.10 Like Gomer, some Christians understand their union with the Lord, but only halfway. Only halfway. Why? Sure, God is with us, but sometimes He isn't. He's um, sometimes angry, sometimes He's loving. He comes and goes. It's true that in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon certain people at certain times, but that was in the Old Testament. Now He said, He will never leave you nor forsake you as he has taken his residence in you, the Holy Spirit. Jesus said the Holy Spirit abides with us and makes his home with us forever. By home, he means home. You are not a motel room for the Lord. You are a walking, talking, living, breathing temple of the Holy Spirit. He is not going anywhere. Are you saying that the Holy Spirit is with me even when I sin? Yes. Christ's love for you 
and his union with you is stronger than anything. That's why it's very important, right? Even after, for example, nagsungit ka or something went went awry, confess you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Homologia with the Holy Spirit. The meaning of confess your sins is say the same thing, right, as God about your sins. That your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. So like Gomer, we have a bad opinion of our bridegroom. Di ba? Maraming ganito. Even in the, even in the, uh, uh, between husband and wives, you don't have a good opinion of your husband. And because of this, we believe in the narrative that you can never measure up. But you know why? The good news of grace says, you are, we are saved, we are forgiven, we are holy because holiness is a person. We are favored, we are accepted because of His grace. Perfection. You and I are perfect. Hallelujah, just like Gomer. Okay, the first mention, the first, we're going back. First mention of the word love in the Bible, as, I, as I've said, is in Mount Moriah. When uh, in Mount Moriah, where God has provided Abraham with a ram for sacrifice, we see the first mention, we also see the first mention of the compound names Jehovah Jireh, right? So then he said, "Take now your only son, your only your uh, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as burnt offering." In the succeeding verse, in chapter in 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 verse three, you will see right. Ang sabi don Abraham, his eyes saw. So uring uring yung 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 saw don is to raa, right? So see who. So the Lord, the the Holy Spirit is actually saying, see who. See Jesus Christ, right? So Jire means to see. Actually, see Jire means to see. Okay, ulit ah. on on the third day, then he lifted Abraham, I left up his eyes and saw. Kasi Jire ito eh. Jire, ang itong wa we are Jire yan. So when, when you click this, makikita mo raa. So to see who? To see Jesus Christ. So see himself as your provision. Himself as your ra'a. So Jire means to see and to provide. So what the Hebrew means literally is that the Lord Jehovah is Jire. Just as you cannot separate forgiveness from the forgiver, you do not you do not have prosperity above from uh, apart from Jehovah. He is your provision. He is your prosperity and He is your supply. So when you see your provision is in the vision of your bridegroom, your provision is in the vision of Jaira, of Aleph Tab. So yung Ra'a, no, idaan na lang natin. Ra'a is Dalet, Aleph, at saka He. Meaning, entrance to strong grace. Ra'a is to see. Right? To see who? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Ra'a, to see. Di ba yan? And it has actually the letter He. Di ba kanina? Letter He. When you remove Ra'a, uh, when, you, when you remove He, from Ra'a, it becomes, di ba, when I remove, it becomes Ra, it becomes evil. Because grace is the person of Jesus Christ. When you fail to see Jesus Christ in every situation, in your situation, in your challenges, it becomes evil. And then another word na kas- kasound ng Ra'a is Ra, Ra, to pasture and to tend. So may hey then. When you remove hey in the shepherd, in pasture, it becomes affliction. So it really, it's a relationship, right? It's relationship. So, which now brings me to Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. This is a beautiful portion of scripture which unlocked for me in uh, this week. Unlocked to sa akin and I just want to share with this, with you kasi super excited ako. So do not, as the, bri- the queen bride, eh, do not remember the former things. Do not remember the former things nor the consider things of old. Anong, anong context nito? Old covenant. Old covenant of the lower in you are measured, you are uh, measured by your performance. You're measured by your obedience. It's not your obedience. It's the obedience of Jesus Christ to the cross. Right? But Samia, behold, I will do a new thing. Kainos. Now it shall spring forth. Shamak. Shall you not know it? Now we are endeavoring to know. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I, I used to read this as like, okay, road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. But there's a sequence, right? There's a sequence. First, right, it will spring forth. 
this will spring forth. And then the Lord is saying, you will be in a road, well, there will be a road in the wilderness. Wilderness, di ba pag sinabing wilderness, it's like uh, you cannot see far beyond. Like just in the, just like where we in right now, the pandemic, right? You, 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 you will not see no government or no government official, actually uh, much more so from last year and even through also now, the the uh, three months ahead, six months ahead, or two years ahead, what will happen, right? It's like wilderness. Parang nasa forest na hindi mo makita yung ending. Right? But the Lord is saying, He will make a road in the wilderness. And then, from wilderness, it becomes a desert. It's from bad to worse. Right? So, parang, parang, in, in some situations in our lives, right? It sometimes feel like, you're in a wilderness and then it's from bad to worse. Now you're in a desert. It's a desert. There's nothing that grows, right? Only cactus, which is very thorny. Kaya sila nagde-develop ng thorns kasi nagko-conserve sila ng water. Di ba? Almost no living thing. But then the Lord is saying He's going to make a river. But aralin natin yung spring forth. Paano, pa, paano tayo makakarating nun sa river? Kasi yung goal natin magkuno sa river. Okay, chamak. Chamak spring forth. So, tatlong letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Chadik, Mem, Tab. Righteousness yung Chadik. Holy Spirit, and, uh, Mem is a picture of water. And water is always in, 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 in the Bible, speaks of the Holy Spirit. Speaks of renewal, speaks of refreshing. So, it's the Holy Spirit. And then, the last letter, which is Tab, is, is a sign. It's a sign of the cross. It's the covenant sign. So, Chamak spring forth. Is the Holy Spirit will always tell you, will always convict you of your righteousness in the new covenant. Will always testify of your righteousness in the new covenant. So meaning, us as the queen bride, will always, the Holy Spirit will always tell us, think, think, be righteousness conscious. You are robed with the robe of righteousness. You are covered with, with, with salvation with Jesus. Hallelujah. And then, um, di ba kanina, wilderness, di ba? Yung wilderness. Naaral natin to in one of the, I think in chapter 22 of Destined to Rain. So therefore, behold, I will allure her and will bring her into wilderness and speak comfort to her. Ah, and I will give her vineyards from there in the valley of Accor as a door of hope. So yung Accor yung valley of trouble yan eh. And she shall sing. Ah, in the valley of Accor, you know the key is to sing. To worship as in the days of our youth, as in the days days of our youth, right? Speaks about the queen bride. Kasi mga bata, di ba? She came up in the land of you, and it shall be in that day, says the Lord, that you will call me my husband, the bridegroom, and no longer call me my master. We're no more slaves. You're not a servant. You're a queen bride. And a queen only speaks, right? Only speaks or see yourself as a queen, as a queen bride who does actually right the 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 work of the bridegroom but you're not a servant hallelujah ang mga servant mga angels so in the valley the lord actually comforts you okay ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng allure allure is is to uh, pata allure so it means mouth pe pe tab hey so no ibig sabihin the mouth declaring smart and grace the holy spirit again the holy spirit in in the wilderness is telling you Right? Declare with your mouth the cross and His grace. Declare with your mouth, sing, O barren. Sing, O barren. Sing of the cross. Hallelujah. And then, yung desert, right? Yung desert naman. Kasi mamaya, dadaanan din natin to. Desert is actually, um, secondary meaning is speech. To speak. To speak to the inner man. Again, the Holy Spirit is saying, is speaking to us, reminding us of the cross. Okay, there's a part, ito wala to dun sa recording. You know, there's a beautiful portion of scripture. Actually, in 2 Kings 3, basahin nyo, this is the story of the three kings. Um, three kings, uh, yung king, yung si king, king of Israel, which is Jehoram, and then King Jehoshaphat, which is the king of Judah, and then yung king of Edom, um, uh, in, at war with Moab. Eh, masyadong malaka. So, ang, 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 yeah, hindi ko na mabasahin na, but in gist, actually, sabi niya, okay, magkampi-kampi tayo. Um, para labanan natin yung ano labanan natin yung king mo, king of Moab okay but umpisahan ko dito he said 
I will go up. I'm sure I am as you are. Ito si Jehoshaphat. My people as your people. My horses as your horses. Then he said, which way shall we go up? And then they answered, by the way, a wilderness. Ah, wilderness. So the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and the king of Edom. So tatlo sila. And they marched on the roundabout route seven days. Paikot-ikot. So sometimes, right, parang you feel like life is like paikot-ikot. Parang walang ending. And there's no water. Parang desert. There's no water for the army. Mamamatay na sila. For the animals that follow them. For the army and the animals. And then the king of Israel, so sabi nung, ting, sabi nung Israel, alas! Actually, hindi nila naisip ha. So, nag-strategy sila, nagpaikot-ikot sila hanggang sa napunta sila sa wilderness and then nasa desert na sila, there's no water. Just like what is saying in Isaiah 43. Right? And then the king of Israel said, Alas, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver, to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Sabi nung, sabi nung, nung king Moab, ah, matatalo ko na kayo. Pagod na, pagod na kayo. Wala kayong tubig. Diba? We, very weak. And then Jehoshaphat, naisip ni Jehoshaphat. Ganyan lang niya naisip, no? Is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord? So, I'm not saying na, you know, yung, mga, yung government, but actually, Diba? They, it's, it's, it's of their advantage to seek counsel from, from a uh, our, 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 uh, wise minister who knows, the, who knows righteousness by faith. Right? Is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by Him? So for example, you and I, meron tayong problema, call a friend. Call a friend, Araya, who will point you to Jesus, who will remind you of your righteousness, of your righteousness through His Son. Is there no prophet by the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? Call a friend. Don't shut yourselves. Right? Don't shut yourself. So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elisha, the son of Shaphat is here. Elisha, who poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. Ah, the word of the Lord is with him. The word of Yahweh is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down with Sumama and dalawa kay Jehoshaphat. Then, and, and, and remember, Jehoshaphat is the king, right? Diba? Um, siya yung, siya yung ano, um, uh, who went into battle and then sabi niya, Lord, um, uh, it, it's going to be, the ba- it's siya yung sabi, the battle is the Lord, right? And then, and then he, he, they went into battle and then three days they gathered spoils. Remember that the story, it, it's in, in Kings also. So then, so he knows actually that the battle is the Lord. Then Elisha said to the king of Israel, what, what I have to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. Because remember, si King Jehoram is an evil king. And then of course, si King Edom. So the only good, good king is Jehoshaphat. But the king of Israel said to him, no, for the Lord has called these three kings together to, to deliver them into the hand of Moab. You know that Elisha means God of God is salvation. Ah, meaning go to a prophet who knows about Jesus, who knows righteousness by faith, like you and I. Hallelujah. So, and Elisha said, "As the Lord of hosts lives, before I whom I stand, surely were not were it not that I gathered the presence of Jehoshaphat, that for if 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 not for Jehoshaphat, I would not look at you nor see you." Kung hindi dahil kay Jehoshaphat, di ko kayo haharapin. Yun ang sabi ni Elijah. Ito na. But bring me, but now, bring me a musician. Ah, bring me. That's why I asked Anda to uh, to play. Bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. Kanino? Kay Elijah. And he said, thus says the Lord. What in the world? They are in a desert, right? Make this valley full of ditches. Hukay! Full of ditches. Sa desert? Full of ditches? Okay, tingnan muna natin yung musician. So, again, right? In in the desert, what to do? Kanina, dun sa Hosea, right? In the desert, worship. Musician, itong letters na musician, ang ibig sabihin niyan, magnify, di ba? Non gimel bab. Magnify the complete work of Jesus Christ, the complete finished work of Jesus Christ. Kasi ibig sabihin ng bab is nail. The nail, the cross, right? Ito, uh, uh, mag, it's magnify. And then gimel is complete. So, magnify. So, in, in the desert, what to do? 
sing, O barren. Magnify the, 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 the Lord Jesus. Magnify His finished work. Hallelujah. And then yung ditch. Yung ditch is a ditch. Right? It's a, di ba, pag nag, nag-gagera, di ba, nag-ano sila, nag sila. What in the world? So, tinignan ko yung ano, tinignan ko yung interlinear. It's a ditch. It's a trench. But you know, yung, ori- yung root word ng ditch is husbandman. Bridegroom. Hallelujah! Your bridegroom. So, okay, tingnan natin yung 17 na. Ito, pinaka, pinakamagandang uh, portion. For that, remember 17 is the number of victory. For that says the Lord, you shall not see the wind, nor shall, nor shall you see rain. You know, even if at this time, right, pandemic, even if you don't see, you don't see any sign that it's going to get good, you don't see any sign that it's going to get better. In fact, from bad to worse, you don't see any wind, you don't see any rain. Ang sabi ni Lord, dig a ditch. Dig a ditch. Worship the Lord. Dig a ditch. Yet the valley, ito sabi ni Lord, yet the valley shall be filled with water so that you, your cattle, and your animals may drink. So, in the wilderness, in the desert, dig a ditch. Dig a ditch by faith. Sing. O Baron, listen to his word. Listen to the his words of righteousness in, 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 chap, in verse 8. And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. He will also deliver the Moabites in your hand. The battle is the Lord. And you shall attack every fortified city and every choice city and shall cut down every good tree and stop every spring of water and ruin every good piece of the land with stone. In the wilderness, in the desert, Dig a ditch. Dig a ditch. Even though you do not see the wind, you not you don't see any sign. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Exalt his goodness. Exalt the finished work. Remember, receive communion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kunwane, meron kang nararamdaman. You don't see. It's still, it's not improving. Dig a ditch. Worship. Take the communion. And there will be river. Rivers of living water. You know the river here? It's Nun, He, and Resh. Magnify, grace, leader. So meaning, magnify the grace of Jesus. Magnify the grace of Jesus in your songs. Not just any song. Huh? So in, in, uh, in when you worship, when you play, right? Magnify the grace of Jesus. So church, this story is really all about us. It's a beautiful picture of you and I, our relationship with Jesus Christ. Isaac means laughter. Right, so w- when the river comes, we're going to we're going to be so joyful, right? Because our Lord, our Lord doesn't want us to cry. He doesn't want us to, you know, never, never think that He wants us to go to hardship and to cry and everything. No, the Holy Spirit, the the, the Lord Jesus came so that we might have an abundant life, have an abundant life. You know that, um, uh, uh, um. Uh, have an abundant, to live an abundant life. Balik tarin mo yung live, it's evil. It's evil. But the Lord wants us to live an abundant life. You see, while we have been here on earth, we, 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 while waiting for our Lord Jesus, He wants us to really ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, show us, show us who our Jesus, show us who Jesus is, our bridegroom. In Ephesians 5, and I'm winding down, 25 to 26, Christ loved the church. And he gave himself up for her so that he might sanctify her himself. Uh, sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water by the word. How? By the washing of water by the word. Tonight, we are being washed by the water of the word. So along our journey in this wilderness, he has regaled us with beautiful stories of our wonderful bridegroom, Lord Jesus Christ. Like Rebecca, Queen Bride, we too have never seen our Lord Jesus Christ. He wants us to see him in the word. Because he's, but because we have, we have heard so many wonderful stories about him, we have fallen, we have, you know, our love for him is increasing and increasing and we're falling madly in love with him, right? And we cannot wait but jump off the camel into his waiting arms. So, in, 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 last, the Lord is saying, Fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. 
Your name, our name now is in the name of Jesus Christ. You are mine. We are His. We are His. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, your Bridegroom, because we are His Queen Bride. And that, my dear sisters, is chapter 12. Hallelujah. 